My name is Sahil Agarwal, and on behalf of the entire team of Pendulum Global, I wanted to welcome you to this webinar training video on Swaziland culture. So you'll hear a little bit uh, of the Swaziland National Anthem in the background. Um, I've actually posted the flag here um, of Swaziland, and so you can see that there are um, three bands. Um, there's blue, there's red, and there's uh, yellow. Um, there's, there's a black and white structure in the middle of this, and this is actually a shield um, that is covering two uh, uh, spears and a staff. Um, and, and those blue and red uh, things kind of coming off of the staff are feathers. Um, blue stands for peace, red stands for past struggles, and yellow stands for um, all the minerals that the country has that used to be such an important part of the country's uh, economy. And then of course the shield and the spears and the staff, they all really um, symbolize uh, protection from enemies. So now that we have a, some, just some fun facts about the flag, and I think you've uh, listened to the national anthem as well, uh, I wanted to provide you with a little bit information about Swaziland, just some of the um, some of the basic information before we go into the, all the cultural aspects. So Swaziland is a landlocked country um, in sub-Saharan Africa. Very, very small country. If you want to compare size, it's um, a, a little bit smaller than the size of the state of New Jersey uh, in terms of the actual uh, physical size. The population is uh, just over 1.4 million individuals. And at a 26.5% HIV prevalence rate, Swaziland has the highest known HIV prevalence rate. And so what you can see here from the Central Intelligence Agency is a population distribution diagram which shows um, the, the distribution of population by age. And so you can see um, that the age of the population uh, the majority of the, the people are within a lower age group. Um, about 37% of the population is of the age 0 to 14. And the median age uh, in the country is 21 years of age, and it's approximately the same for both males and females. So if we talk a little bit about um, the history of Swaziland, uh, we will find that prior to the 1700s, uh, Swaziland was um, basically covered with a lot of hunter-gatherer populations. There wasn't really any uh, centralized governmental authority until the 1700s uh, when an official monarchy was established. And um, the name Swaziland uh, really came from one of the kings, um, not the first kings, but uh, one of the kings... Um, who, who uh, governed the country. Uh, his name was M. Swati. I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it exactly correct, but uh, the name comes from one of the kings. Um, however, um, in, the, in the early 1900s, um, Swaziland became a British protectorate, so it became uh, under British rule, but it was, it was able to achieve its independence in 1968 and it still remains a monarchy today it's one of the last uh, living monarchies that we have uh, in the world but it's it's still a monarchy and it still exists um, there have been some um, movements towards democratic reforms um, that won't get too much into the politics uh, behind all of this but there has been a struggle um, to, to provide the Swaziland people with a greater sense of democracy in the presence of the monarchy that, that already exists. So I hope this kind of history, I, I know it was rather brief, but um, the real focus that I'm trying to get at here is to give you some basic picture of, of Swaziland here. So now if we talk about the economy of Swaziland, uh, Swaziland has a very high dependency on South Africa um, both for its imports as well as uh, for its exports. Um, and really, in terms of the um, economic activities of Swaziland, 
um, Swaziland primarily um, does does manufacturing and its biggest export product and the product that it, it um, primarily manufactures uh, at this point is sugar. Um, originally, Swaziland used to be known for its um, minerals and uh, the mining of those minerals, but that has um, seen a decline in recent years. Uh, and, and this has partially contributed to the fiscal crisis or financial crisis um, that the country has been experiencing. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the work life of individuals in Swaziland, but um, this fiscal crisis has caused to an alarmingly high uh, unemployment rate within the country. So now let's talk about some of the basics of Swaziland culture. Um, let's, get some, let's get some terminology and some of the, the um, essentials out of the way. In terms of nationality, um, Swaziland people are called uh, Swazis. Uh, Swazi is the nationality. Um, in terms of the languages, there are two official languages. Um, one of them is English, and that is used by the people. It's, it is taught in some schools to some level, um, but it's primarily used as an um, exchange in, in the government. Uh, but it is an official language. <clears throat> and then the uh, the native official language is Siswati, um, and, and that, that is, like I said, the, the native language. In terms of religion, um, Christianity is the predominant religion within the country. Um, the most prominent religion, um, I believe about um, up to 40% of the population is uh, practicing Zionism, which is basically a mixture of uh, Christianity uh, and local traditional beliefs. And then the uh, second most common is uh, Roman Catholic. So, you know, Christianity has, has very deep inroads uh, within the country, and a lot of the festivities uh, are, are centralized around uh, Christianity and, and, you know, the this, this standard um, Christian holidays and festivities that are celebrated even here in the United States. The capital is... Um, M Babani. Um, it, it depends on you know some people pronounce it different uh, differently. Um, if you were to look at the C Swati pronunciation of uh, of of the capital city, uh, it is M Babane. M Babane is uh, the uh, C Swati uh, way of of saying uh, the capital. And the government uh, is actually once again a monarchy, uh, and this is a monarchy. Uh, that consists of three branches, uh, not not very different uh, from from what we have in the United States in terms of in terms of our our three branches. So um, there is of course a uh, an executive branch, and uh, that basically consists of the king. Um, today that king is uh, M Swati the third, and he's been in power since 1986. Um, there's also the head of the government, so there's a prime minister and there's um, a cabinet as well. There are no elections for the executive branch. The monarchy is hereditary, um, and the prime minister is appointed by the monarch. Uh, the leg there's a legislative branch. That's the second branch of the government, um, and it consists of a Senate and a House of Assembly. Um, there are 30 seats in the Senate and 65 for the House of Assembly. Um, and there are elections for uh, the House of Assembly. In terms of the judicial branch, the third branch of the government, there is a Supreme Court of the Judicature, uh, and it basically consists of the Supreme Court and a High Court, um, and the monarch is going to appoint the justices of that Supreme Court. Um, as well. So you can see that there, um, because there is a monarchy system, there is less democracy than, than, than what we would see here, uh, of course, in the United States. So uh, the next thing that I wanted to go over are the unique festivities of the Swazi uh, people. And what's, what's important to know is that there are um, a lot of different festivities and holidays that are centered around uh, Christianity. Um, and, and those festivities are celebrated all around the world. So I, I don't really want to go um, into all of those ones, but I do want to go uh, into some of the unique holidays and festivities that are practiced uh, within the country. And the first one is 
uh, Inkwala, and I may be completely butchering the pronunciation, but just, just bear with me uh, with that. Um, Inkwala is a three-week ceremony that occurs uh, in mid-December, and uh, it lasts all the way uh, up till the end of the first week of uh, January. And really what this, what this, uh, this ceremony is for is, uh, or this festival is for, is, is really just um, to celebrate um, the harvest time. And so um, it really also marks the traditional beginning of the, the new year. Um, and so uh, basically it's a, it's a time of rituals, songs, dances, costumes, and um, there's also just a, a little bit of a ceremony in which the king consumes the first fruits of the harvest and then um, everyone else uh, is, is able to try the, the new fruits um, as well. The next holiday is um, the Umlanga or the Reed Dance Festival and it's actually a celebration of female virginity. Um, it was originally um, believed that um, virginity of, of young girls before before marriage should be celebrated and um, that would promote um, girls from not having premarital sex and so that that celebration exists um, within the country and um, you know it was it was actually promoted even more in the early 2000s as a um, as a you know a quote unquote sex ban that the that the king uh, instated within the country as a way to prevent the spread of of HIV but of course um, that was met by a lot of um, anger and um, discouragement and so he he kind of uh, removed that sex ban but um, this this festivity is kind of meant as a way uh, to to preserve the belief that um, individuals should not be participating in premarital sex. The last um, celebration is the Somlolo or the Independence Day and that's on September 6th. Remember uh, 1968 was when uh, the country was freed from uh, being a British protectorate and so um, the uh, September 6th is known as their Independence Day. So in terms of marriage, um, arranged marriage is a um, big part of Swazi culture. Um, there are, you know, more and more individuals who are getting married today um, by love marriage, um, but arranged marriage is still a uh, traditional marriage style that, that does occur in Swaziland. Polygamy is also a, um, a part of Swaziland culture. The, the kings have been known to have multiple wives as well. Um, society is patriarchal, um, however, there is um, kind of starting to move um, more towards women also taking a role um, in the economy and in, in uh, lifestyle in general. But um, the basic idea behind this patriarchal um, system is that the, the men in the household are the breadwin uh, breadwinners and the, the women in the households are the um, taking care of the, the children. Um, at, at home. Um, there's also a um, belief in, in large families and so um, there's a, a rather high um, birth rate uh, in, in these in women who, who are um, having children and so the, the average number of children per female is about three and a half, three and a half children. Whereas here in the United States I think it's, uh, uh, it's two, point, two point something. So there, there is a, a, a pretty sizable difference in the number of children women are having uh, in Swaziland. Uh, in terms of work life, um, there was an Employment Act of 1998 um, which set the working age um, population, so which basically set the bottom um, minimum age for employment is about 15 to 18 years. Um, but there's pretty poor protection for working children under the Employment Act, unfortunately. Um, and as I brought about earlier, there, there is a very high unemployment rate in, in recent years due to a financial crisis. Uh, where up to 40% of the population is unemployed. Um, because 70% of Swazis are on ru rural homesteads, uh, homesteads um, the primary means of sustenance is uh, subsistence farming. Um, in, in recent years, um, 
there has been a movement towards woman empowerment. So um, now about 25% of women uh, in Swaziland are actually earning wages. So they're starting to enter the, the workforce. So we're kind of um, moving away from a uh, more traditional patriarchal style and we're starting to get more women into, uh, we're starting to see more women in the, in the workforce uh, in Swaziland. In terms of leisure, um, some of the activities that particularly rural uh, individuals participate in in Swaziland are traditional dances and community events, uh, radio, um, and in terms of sports, soccer is the uh, most popular sport in Swaziland, and there other, other sports are tennis, squash, volleyball, golf even. Um, and there's also, you know, a, a, some, a, you know, restaurants and bars that people visit as well. Um, and participation in family activities and visiting family and spending leisure time with family uh, is also a very big part of the Swazi culture. And finally, I wanted to close with uh, some of the values of the Swazi people. Dance is a very big, uh, very important value uh, for the Swazi people. Um, it's, like I said, one of their leisure activities, but it's also um, just, you know, some other, uh, you know, important aspect of, of the Swazi people. Um, it's, it's just a way to appease the spirits as well. Um, there's also a strong belief in tradition. So, we, you know, there, there has been a move towards uh, modernizing the country and um, like I said, with the warm woman entering the workforce, but um, the Swazi people understand that, you know, they, they have made steps to modernize the country, but they still uh, want to focus on, you know, keeping their ancestral heritage, to keep their ancestral culture. Um, they think that um, preserving a reasonably traditional way of life is a way to connect to their ancestors. Um, Marriage is a very important value within Swazi culture. Um, a, 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 it is said that a person's social status really depends on their marriage and uh, their children. Um, another basic value is respect. Um, uh, the, the people who, who are from Swaziland, they, they live in Swaziland, they're very proud of their country and, um, you know, they, they have a very... Uh, beautiful countryside, a lot of uh, beautiful things to see, um, and, and uh, they want to preserve that image, and they have a lot of respect for the country. Um, and finally, um, in terms of human rights, uh, the Swazi people understand that there are some um, issues in regards to um, providing uh, the population with some basic human rights, uh, whether it be social rights, economic rights, health rights, um, and so they understand that um, this issue exists and um, they, they are trying to move towards um, providing more human rights. And that's, that's an important value um, that the Swazi people believe in. And with that, I know it's a very short video, but um, I just wanted to provide you with a, a good overview of the Swazi culture. Um, I want this to be a good overview, um, and I'm hoping that as you... Um, if you're a volunteer, as you converse with your adolescent, you'll get to know a little bit more about their daily life and some of the activities that they participate in. So if you have any questions, feel free um, to send us an email at volunteer at pendulumglobal.org or visit us online on, at pendulumglobal.org or on Facebook at facebook.com slash pendulumusa. I'll see you in the next one.